My name is Kayla. I'm a senior consultant at the Improved Group, and I have led the evaluation team over here at the Improved Group on the Bush Fellowship Program. This multi-year evaluation is examining the impacts of the prestigious fellowship, which both for a degree program as well as and or an individualized uh, plan. It provides mentorship, court connections, leadership development, and a whole host of other programming. Christy, I'll have you introduce yourself. Hey, thanks, Kayla. I'm Christy Ward, I'm Leadership Programs Manager at the Bush Foundation. So I'm excited to get to talk with you today. This has been a project we've worked on for a long time that I've been excited to get to lead with the evaluation over the last 20 years of the fellowship program. And I will jump in and introduce myself. I'm so glad to be with you all. I'm Anita Patel. I'm the Director of Leadership Programs at the Bush Foundation. And I've been continually inspired by this work and I'm so excited to kind of delve into this conversation of the work that Improve Group has really led in exploring how fellows are inspired, equipped and connected through the Bush Fellowship. In your own words, tell us more about the Bush Fellowship. So how would you describe its intended impacts and why was doing an evaluation important? Yeah, it's a great question. Thanks for giving us the chance to talk about the Bush Fellowship. Um, maybe I'll back up just for a second and say the Bush Foundation is all about supporting and inspiring great ideas and the people who power them. And so the Bush Fellowship is really focused on extraordinary leaders throughout the Bush Foundation region of Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the 23 Native nations that share that geography. There are incredible people with amazing ideas, and we know that through support, they can just soar and help our region to be a place where every person can thrive. And so the Bush Fellowship is all about what do you need to be as strong as possible to really lead deep, effective change that is focused and has equity at its center. Um, and so this evaluation is really thinking about, can we have a better understanding of how, through the experience of the Bush Fellowship, do fellows grow? How are they inspired? How are they equipped? How are they connected to make the change that they talk about wanting to make when they apply for the fellowship? We're hoping to kind of learn about what happens over time? So five years after the fellowship, 10 years, 25 years, um, do those experiences to still sit with them? Do the connections they have still help them to lead change? And what is it that they've inspired in their communities? Are there things that have kind of been sparked by the work that fellows have done that then have had ripple effects? So how have they led change and what have they inspired in others? So Christy, we have taken a developmental and iterative approach to this work, working together to co-create, test, and refine the evaluation tools. How has your perspective on evaluation transformed over the course of this project? Thanks, Kayla. So I think about how my perspective has transformed. I really am trying to draw back over the past three years where I have a moment of wanting to add up how many hours do we spend together? And I think it was probably a lot more than actually we anticipated, but that was so core and critical to getting to this place of being able to have a strong partnership together. And I think that in and of itself is what can help make any of this work well. Um, what I really appreciated over time is our ability to hold evaluation goals out in front of us. So think about what are we trying to do and keeping our process consistent enough to be able to build from year to year. And along the way, at that same time, holding flexibility so we can truly reflect on the data that we had received. We can take time to discuss as a group and learn from the moment so that we can keep creating a stronger process. That is part of what that developmental um, choice was about so that we can grow and get it stronger from time to time. And it's with that strong partnership, I think, that we could co-create that created an ability for us to learn together. And that took a responsibility and a willingness to be honest and being vulnerable in a moment to be able to acknowledge growth and understanding um, and understanding our experiences of ourselves, but also of our fellows to push each other to keep advancing equity in our work and equitable evaluation process. 
So I think overall I've gained an even greater appreciation of holding people at the center of the evaluation. And if you do that, you might get to enjoy the amazing gifts of stories and inspiration and experiences that they're willing to share. Can you do have reflections of how your perspective has changed over the past few years that you'd like to share? Sure, I'm happy to share. And I also think, Christy, what, what you raised resonates so deeply. So I'll just build on, I think, two words stand out for me, and that's purposeful and emergent. And both of those things, I think, were at play throughout this. And I really want to name um, kind of the ability of the Improve Group to keep bringing us back to our purpose and to be open to the things that emerge along the way. And I think you know, we had the opportunity to work with such a talented team, um, and we have the fortune of having an, you know, an incredible person, Erica Orton, and the Bush Foundation staff who has this as her expertise as well. And so to be able to all work together and to hear people who are experts in their field, Erica, Kayla, and your team, kind of go back and forth on how we hold that purpose, the programmatic purpose that Christy and I bring at the center, while still exploring some really deep themes that were emerging and questions about, you know, we didn't expect this particular finding. Should we dig deeper? Is there a way to dig deeper and maybe even change our process a little bit? And that was, I think, to me, really an important evolution around this isn't a rigid structure we set out, you know, three years ago and we're going to stick to it no matter what. It was really about how do we best honor the stories that are being told and the purpose of continuing to inspire, equip, and connect leaders through these stories, through the evaluation? So I just really appreciate your team, Erica, Christy, and the leadership programs team work in order to do this. Thanks, Anita. And I, I totally echo that. Being able to work with um, someone who has evaluation expertise internal to an organization has such a great contribution to our work just in being able to understand her lens coming from someone who's looking at evaluation for the foundation overall and what that means for the foundation. So that's really been wonderful. What has been your favorite part about working on this project with our team? My favorite part, when I think about our time together, we have been working on this for a number of years and that's actually really hard to get down to just one aspect of it because there have been so many, I think, exciting moments from how we can develop partnerships together and work as a team. I think the moments where I've come in and said, I would love to think about this and then Kayla, you or somebody on your team has said, I hear that, but what if we also add this component in the moments that we can spark and build on each other has, I think, created just a stronger in way of thinking about evaluation, a stronger way of actually honoring the stories and the people who are a part of this program, being able to collect it in a way that really thinks about who are they and how can we get the stories in the way that they're most comfortable to be able to share. So I think it's actually, well, I'm almost always going to say my favorite part of Bush Fellowship Impact is stories or evaluation is hearing directly from fellows. I think I want to also just acknowledge that I have had so much fun working with your team and thinking about how can we do this work in a way that we get to be so excited about at the end of it. We've been working together for so long, so I also really want to hear what is one of your favorite parts about the working together or over this time with the project? I would say my favorite part of our work together has been working with your team of three. I think the three of you, um, Anita, Christy, and your colleague Erica, come to every meeting and bring completely different perspectives, which really carries the work forward in ways that we wouldn't imagine prior at the beginning of every meeting. Um, and so being able to see how the three of you examine the content differently, kind of look at it from every perspective you can think of and, and really think about how do we make sure the work is moving forward in the best way and that we're communicating about it to every audience that might encounter it. And I would say my second thing that comes up is the iterative and developmental nature of the work. So I remember we got our work started with kind of a high level survey, high level interview protocol, and got to talk to fellows about the change they experienced in the fellowship program and how that helped them. And then got a, a broad understanding of the change they were making in their community. But then we decided, you know, we really wanna dive deeper into hearing about what fellows are doing. 
And so we started with case studies, really talking in depth with two fellows, um, hearing about all the amazing things they were doing and, and also just about how their change created over time. And now the second and third year of the fellowship uh, evaluation, we've gotten to, to enhance our evaluation results with putting the survey out to even more participants, doing more interviews, um, and gathering just this whole new understanding of how the impact that leaders are seeing from the fellowship has, has similar notes, similar uh, stories across all of them, but then they all go and do such completely different types of, of change and, and intersectional change, talking to people who are working on the arts, forestry, education, health, and, and many different overlapping points of view there. What about the findings have you found most interesting or powerful? That is an amazing question and I want to say everything, um, <laughs> but I will narrow it down. I think it is such a huge gift, and Christy mentioned this, that we get to hear directly from fellows, that they are taking the time to share their truth, to share their experience, and being able to go through those with your team, Kayla, and make sense of them is incredible. I think I will narrow it down. I'll narrow it to two. And one, the first is that it it seems no matter the year, so the fellowship's been around for over 60 years, and no matter kind of what year someone's responding from, we're seeing that through the fellowship, these leaders kind of grew their vision from looking at kind of individual change to focusing on larger scale and thinking about that systems level. And I just, you know, you look around and imagine the impact of that, both in someone kind of visioning for themselves what's possible with their leadership and what happens when they take action and create change on that scale. Um, so I think that's the first. The second thing that stands out to me is seeing, again, across the different years of the fellowship, people reporting that the experience of that fellowship, the learning that they kind of sought, the connections they established, helped them to lead in ways that make them more equitable leaders. And we know in a region that has both incredible potential and deep inequities, having leaders who have kind of embodied what it takes to lead with equity at its center is core. And so really being inspired that fellows, while none of us are perfect, fellows are seeing that through their fellowship, they're embracing and building on that commitment. Yeah, you know, I think you're right that there are just so many parts I want to honor the all of it as well. I think as we have thought about the different ways that we're we have data that's come back between statistics and, and diving into what does it mean, both the reflection on people who have said, you know, 20 years ago, I'm still saying that this made that giant impact to a year ago. This is what I'm still what I'm thinking about and having that way to look back over time and continuously find ways that I think demonstrate if you believe in a person, if you take this extraordinary person and say, we want to invest in you, what magic can come out of it? It's just undefined, and I think the quotes that they have brought back time and time again help to show that. Um, I hope at some point we'll get to talk about our case studies, the stories that Fahia showed us, told us, but I think even the moments when we've had those interpretive data meetings where Kayla or someone else on the team have come back and kicked off before we even started on that data and said, I'm really excited to tell you about this thing I heard. I had so much fun in these phone interviews. You wouldn't believe it. And I used to sit in those meetings. I remember sitting in that conference room while I'm here at home, and I can picture that meeting in that moment, thinking uh, they have the spark for the fellowship with them. And that is, I think, just so fun to be able to share the privilege of our jobs with the people around, because we know these leaders don't do it on their own. And that is an exciting place to be able to um, carry some of the spark that they, they live with so brightly along with us. Yeah, Christy, I, I love how you're framing it there in terms of getting to experience some of that spark. I think that's that's a great way to frame it and, and really captures what our team has enjoyed so much about this project. Um, and, and that kind of is my perfect segue into asking about what is your favorite story or example from this project? Yeah, I have been thinking about it and because there are so many examples, I even found myself stuck on how do I highlight one or two. So I'll say a, a couple of thoughts. I think as what we've been talking about now is that we have this 
impact study over the past 20 years, but for so long, we have had anecdotal stories. We know, we believed in it, we either witnessed it or somebody has shared the stories of this about that the impact the fellows have made on some, you know, how they've shifted their thinking, how they've inspired others around them, made their work or their community better. And we do not have this evaluation data to really describe or really show the impact of the Bush Fellows and the Bush Fellowship Program. I think, Kayla, you know, with your leadership and alongside your team, you helped dream alongside us about imagining what, what could we learn through this impact narrative study. Um, we were able to see it and hear about Parkia's journey, but only did we get to look back over the last 10 years that we heard directly from her, from her colleagues, from her students, members of our community. The narrative studies and quantitative data, the phone interviews, the combination of all of that, we're now able to share with the region what is possible and what, what can we show when you put investment in others. There, there was a part of this, care, this narrative case study that, that Parkia said, what the Bush Fellowship really did was invest in me and my passion for change. Lots of self-discovery. It clicked the pause button for me and said, okay, Farhia, what do you really want to do? What do you want to take your life? That in itself was a huge gift, that pause. What it did was provide an opportunity to look within, build my grit, my determination, and my perseverance muscle. I think that quote describes so much of what is my favorite part of, of our work together. The idea of perseverance muscles being built up after a moment of pause. I think that shift, the demonstration of her shifting of approach, the focus, the thought process, and then how that shift inspired others from things of how classes could be taught, how the city could engage with communities, how work could happen to shift systems. There, I, I would, um, I'd love to talk about so many examples, and this is one that I think just demonstrates the beauty of what humans can do to create our world to be even better. Yeah, and I'll just add on to that. I think one of the unexpected joys I think that has come from this is um, I've gotten a number of notes and calls from fellows after they did this reflection about the fellowship because they just wanted to say more, like it sparked more in them about um, a story of connection with another fellow that they had kind of forgotten about until filling this out and yet how instrumental it was in them creating change. I just got another one the other day from someone who said, oh, I was thinking about what I said, you know, quite a while ago now, and I wanted to add in a couple of things maybe that you could share in the future. And so the reason I share that is absolutely their stories and their truth are part of this impact work with the improved group and with the team at the improved group, you've actually unlocked something in fellows where they're able to now share things in a way that they maybe hadn't before and are saying, I want people to hear my story. I want people to be inspired by it so they can think about a fellowship so they can think about how they might, you know, embrace being a leader of change in ways they maybe never imagined. And I don't know if everyone can say that about like filling out a survey or having a phone conversation. And I think part of that is your style too, right? These are extraordinary leaders who have drive and vision and you have a style and a tone that welcomes them in, that welcomes them to share that. And that's such a gift. So that's been one of the exciting things for me as well. I'm curious, Kayla, if you would talk about kind of what's inspired you about this work. You've heard from Christy and I, what would you say? I would say, you know, working on this project this year more than ever has truly been inspirational just in terms of the connections, right? It's so easy. All of us are kind of here in our little Zoom boxes um, all day and being able to kind of hear about what's happening in the community from fellows who are so engaged and just so so drawn into the connections in the community has really been a breath of fresh air. Um, I think what stands out to me and is is so inspirational is it was easy to kind of come into this project and understand that we were evaluating the impact of the fellowship, which is focused on an individual, and to hear that they're they're sought out by kind of pitching their idea 
oftentimes it sounds like kind of a little uncertain if, if that's a great idea or um, if it's just something they, they had a shower moment of. And, and, you know, they've put so much into it and they talk about just the interview process alone, helping them to better understand what their motivations are, what their priorities are, how they understand change, and then understanding how that investment in an individual, that change in, in understanding their ability to create change creates so many new change makers in communities. Every time we interview a fellow or talk to them and we ask about the change they're making, it is so rare that they talk about the thing they're doing on their own in their own silo. They're often talking about, well, I found out this was going on. And so I went over in, in that direction and I, I helped you know, empower individuals and understand what they need and create connections and equip them with what they need to create their change. And then that builds on this whole new pathway. And now I'm going in this direction. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a similar thread at every single point in their change story, but the way that they're going about it is by going where the path leads them, leading with uncertainty, kind of leading with this ability to adapt and change, especially this time. Um, and finding people who also have great ideas and partnering with them and, and helping them get what they need to create change. So being able to kind of see how an investment of in one individual creates all these different changes throughout a community has been honestly quite inspirational, especially, especially here once we're all, you know, situated in our own homes and, and wanting out to seek out that connection. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you for your work on this project, all of your leadership and inspiring us to keep thinking differently about how we can do it and bring this together to celebrate you and improve group in this moment. Great. Thank you both so much. And thank you again for sharing your story. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to hear about how our connections will continue to grow moving forward. Happy 20th anniversary, Improve Group. Happy 20th anniversary, Improve Group.